everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're getting ready to start a new project today. And I'll show you what we're doing. This right here on this little homemade surface drive mud motor here. What we're going to do, you watched the last video, if you've seen it, lost my air filter cover. And this has got the factory card behind it, which I bypassed the governor and took all that off. But this has no low or high idle screw, nothing. You can't do nothing with it once you, you can just kind of clean it and hope it works. It's about all you can do with it. And I hate it. And I'm gonna take all this off and I lost the breather for it. And we're gonna put this guy on. This is a 22 millimeter, which is just fine for that small engine. It's a Makuni knockoff, key hand knockoff, you know, just a little old cheapo you can get off eBay, Amazon. But they're not bad little carburetors, and I like them because they're slide carburetors, and they're adjustable. They got screws in them, right there, so we can set the idle and get this thing to idle right, and make it work. I'm sick of that stupid thing, and I have made them before. This is what we're going to end up doing. This is off another project. I ended up swapping the motor because it blew up, but it was just a pile of garbage. But this worked for a long time. But, I mean, I built this intake, but this is basically what we're going to be making today. That one's too big, and it won't fit on this, so we got to do it all over from scratch. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So you could do this on your mud motor, any small engine you got, as long as it's single cylinder. We'll have to, I'll cover a V-twin later how to do that. But right now, this is just kind of your single cylinders. So I will get started, and I'll show you what we got, what you're going to need. You don't need this. But I like this. This is uh, like poster board. You can get it in your arts and crafts section. It's like a really, really thick paper, but it's a lot thinner than cardboard. You can pick them up at Dollar Tree for a buck or a buck twenty-five now. But or you can just use cardboard. Uh, either way, I found this is a lot easier to use than cardboard, and I can get a lot of pieces out of it. I've got two big sheets of it over there. They're like a oh probably two foot by three foot four foot something like that and you're gonna need some basic tools you'll need uh you know some kind of a gut knife with a good blade scissors all that marker basic stuff and then when we get to the metal part where we make the flanges you'll at least need a hole saw set and a angle grinder that's going to be your bare minimum. And you're going to have to have a welder, or if you don't have any of these tools, hopefully you have a friend that does. Usually that's what happens. People come hit me up, friends of mine on certain things. There's a couple of them that don't have tools, and I help them time to time with stuff like this because they help me. So, good thing. But I'm just saying you're going to need some basic tools to do this. But this will be better when we get away with this factory junk and get a good carburetor on here. So, I will set the camera up, and I'll show you how to make... That you're gonna have to have some gaskets, or if you got lucky and you already have the gasket for this, because you're gonna have to trace it out on a piece of metal to make your flange, like I did here on this one. And I would recommend at least three sixteenths, maybe quarter inch if you got it, because if you don't, if you get it too thin, ten or twelve gauge, it could. I've always been worried it would warp if it gets hot. But technically, this is pulling a vacuum on it on the inside, and it'll be kind of cooling it down, too. So, anyways, at least get some 316 metal. Be, be better safe than sorry. So, I'll set the camera up and show you how to make the carb gasket. So, hang on. All right, everybody. I'm going to try to do this from behind the camera. But, what you're going to need, this goes against your engine block right here. The best way to do this is to take this and kind of lock it. Hold it with one hand really good, and if you'll take your time, you can press that out and see right where your gasket is going to be. Get the shape of your carburetor, all that good stuff. Just take your time, and do it just like that, just kind of rub it. You can kind of see it starting to come together. And this will give you a pattern to retrace. So, don't worry about it, it's got a crinkle or something in it. Many things get that outline. So, kind of like that. And let me see if I can get the inside. Alright, then like this. Just kind of mark your hole. There's my bolts. Just 
got a little drill bit, but you can use something else if you don't have that, but you're going to need it for the holes. So then I got a really nice little exacto knife. Like I said, the whole time, hold that down. And I have been lucky enough. This comes with two of the bolts. So if you wanted to, you know, you could kind of screw these in. Get up here where you can see it. Just kind of hold it in place a little bit. But like I said, get that all mashed out. And then take your knife and go around. And just slowly go around this. Take your time, whatever you do. You don't want to goof this up. This one's really important. So. And then, once you get that. Yeah, I did a little clean up, but there you go. And we got everything pressed out. And then we'll take some scissors and cut this outline. So. Uh, now that you know how to do that, I'll come back after I cut this out with the scissors and show you what we do from there. So hang on just a minute. Okay, everybody. Hopefully you can see that. I think it's in the camera fairly good. Give you a rough idea. I'm going to try to keep this video real short as I can. But now that you got your gasket, put it over your metal, and you trace that. So you're going to have to do this all over again and cut this out with the metal. Very simple. Again, take your time. Like I said, not a hard process, just a time consuming one. Okay. Trace your hole out. Hey, voila, there you go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I got it on the metal now. Now this one's a little goofy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of straighten that up, freehand that a little bit. Just make it with one big loop. Instead of making all the little straight and goofy edges because it's not gonna matter, but it will make cutting it so much easier. So, there we go. Now, when you get your hole for your center, I know this is a little rough, but it works. Like I said, I've built these before. They work fine. And we'll have to weld it up. But once you get that center hole, here's a little trick. Go from center to center. And then go from the edge from center to center, best you can. Hey, voila. There's your center of your hole. It'll give you a target for your hole saw. And you can get that out and take you oh i've got a, a punch take you a center punch or nail or something and get center of these holes where you drill them and hit them with a hammer and that'll keep your drill bit from wa walking around on you so i am going to do that and then i will be back after i get this cut out and you're going to have to do the same process again for this carburetor in here so i'm gonna get this all took off get this stuff out and that'll be your next step. So I'll be back when I get that done. And I'm trying to keep this sh video as short as I can. So I will be back once I get this cut out. So see you in a bit. All right, everybody. Now what I was talking about, center punch. This is what I use for mo making all my holes, motor mounts, drills, all that stuff. Just no punch. And I ground it down to a tight point. Get your little old hammer. Find your center. As close as you can, just like that, hold it, and I got a hole in the center of the intake, the two little holes for the bolts where they go through, get them centered, there you go, and that will keep your bit from walking, you can see it, knocked it right in the center, center center now i'll get that cut out and ground and cleaned and we'll have something i ain't gonna bother showing you that delete it you can figure that out but at bare minimum you're gonna need a cut off wheel and a grinder 
and you can go up there you know and cut that out grind it just take a little more time or if you got a torch or a plasma which i have one so i'm going to use my plasma and i'll come back once we get this cut out and we'll do the same exact process on the motor once we get to it but that's the main thing take your time trace that out get your holes and go just a hair oversize oh i have to find it again here in a minute but anyway here's the hole saws so get one just a hair bigger on the outside edge of the marker or just a hair past it and then that's the one you want that way it won't restrict the flow of your intake so i will be back when i get that out and we'll go from there all right everybody got her cut out now look how pretty that is how centered that is holes all line up just perfectly you can see daylight through this one but the camera ain't picking it up but they're dead centered i mean just pretty as you please and don't worry about your flans being not perfect it's not gonna look super good but i mean it i can't pick it up from the back but it's sealed all the way off so you ain't gonna have a problem but main thing holes line up and you want that just as center as you can i'm just on the outside edge of that little rubber and everything's lined up good so now second part of this take your carb off your factory luckily this had a little plastic shim so there's my gasket i don't have to make one so i can just trace this and cut out my little piece of metal and then what i gotta do is weld the pipe in between them so i'm gonna get these studs out if you got studs you have to take them out because you're going to end up getting some short bolts to bolt your new intake in here to your head so i'll get this off and get these studs out get the new piece cut and i'll show you the next part of all that which will be welding all that together and then centering up because a lot of times they're offset against the head time you go to the back so you'll have to get that welded up and set and then make sure your card's level so all that's coming and as soon as i get it done i'll be back so see you here in a second hey everybody welcome back getting a little closer been a little bit i've been busy but got this on this is on here and set up and what we're going to do at this point like i said it's the same as the first take your little paper poster board cardboard whatever make your pattern get it on there that little piece of round plates up there and then you're going to want pipe nipple to fit your needs whatever size this one's happened to be a three quarter what works well here what i'm going to do i'm going to set this up here and get this level and i'm going to tack it right here on the outsides i'm just going to put a couple tacks on it and then i'm going to pull this off and then weld it all the way up it's pretty tight right here on the side so i might or might not have to do just a hair bit of grinding around them bolts but i mean it's it's just all you can do so i'll get that tag it and come back and then we're going to weld the other flange on this side for for the carburetor but i'm going to take it off after i get it tacked and do the same thing weld it up so it's just kind of what you do and all this will be a little different like this one happens to be a two and a half it works real good it's just going to barely be outside the motor and that'll work a two probably would have been fine worked a little better but you know what i had so whatever and someone's probably gonna freak out about this this ain't gonna hurt nothing i've done this stuff before and i'm not gonna get any bead or nothing in there and getting the valve blah 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 it's not gonna hurt nothing because we're doing it on the outside i will be pushing the pipe against it so once i get done with that and get it tacked i weld it and i'm gonna do the other side the same way real simple and when you do the second one what you'll want to do is level this carburetor up too once you get your pipe on and weld your second flange kind of get the bottom of your bowl level eyeball that and get it where you want it and weld it all up and that's pretty well it like i said this is a simple process and then you can put this macuni on so that factory one will get a lot more air run better and idle i can actually set the carburetor that's the main thing and it will work so much better so because you can actually adjust it so anyway i will get this done and i will come back i'm trying to keep this video short and show you how to do this so i will see you here in a bit so hang on all in 
in and welded and done right there. So welds turned out real nice. Just weld them all the way around because you got to make sure you got a good welder or if you ain't very good at it, go ahead and find someone that is because it's got to be airtight. You can't have a pinhole or nothing in there that's going to suck air. So next deal, after you get that done, come back to your gasket on your carburetor and I'm going to center that up, get my bolts. Bear with me here. So cinch that down and get that all the way down and then we're going to snug these two up this one's threaded if not put it through what you got put your bolts through it and your nuts so oh come on of course it's going to want to fight and argue all right only slightly stubborn but once you get that i'll go ahead and run that down here in a second I'll center that up best you can is what this particular one I use two different sizes I used a smaller one for that one which fit right in on the taper and it worked and this one's gonna fit right inside tight flush and I'm gonna bump it right up against that carb tack weld the back and then pull it off and weld it and it's done so we're gaining so I'll get that done and then I'll be back and probably about it might hook it up and run it so hang on I'll see you here in just a second all right, everybody, next day. Took off last night, had to go. So anyway, back today to finish. I'll show you where we're at. Can't remember where I was at yesterday, but. All right, I've got the uh, flange mounted on the carb. So now what I'm gonna do, get that centered and get your pipe up here and get this carb where you want it. And you need to level your boat out, kind of where it's gonna be in the water. And then that will give you a guide and you can get your carburetor up here and get oh ouch that felt great that'll teach me to hold on to it with two hands won't it had one on the camera <laughs> okay i'm not letting go but anyways you need to grab the uh camera or camera carburetor and once you get it up there get it where the bowl is level which it is not and get that bowl level and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here on this side and I'm going to tack weld that. One little tack on top, one on bottom. Yeah, I still got a hold of it. <laughs> but hold it and then get you two tacks on it and then you can pull it off and weld it all the way around like I did right here. So that's what I'm going to do before I get hit in the knee again. All right, I'll get all my stuff drug out over here, get this tacked, and then we'll get it off, get it welded. And then the only thing I got to do, I'll have to make a gasket. You'll have to make a gasket and put against the block and put a gasket in right here between it and your carburetor. I know it's got an O-ring, but that's how I usually do it, just to be safe. The gasket is cheap, and I'll have to go dig it out. But anyway, when I get done, they make a gasket material. You can get a tractor supply, Napa, O'Reilly's, whatever. You can make your own gaskets. It's a black color stuff let me there's a gas ah like this this is exactly what it'll look like but it'll be in sheets same stuff so like i said just ask for gasket material there'll be some they've got some cork too but you don't want that you want this black felt paper stuff so anyway we'll get all that done and i'll come back and we'll have this thing running and i'll show you what it's all like when it's done so see you here in a second it'll be the last step so See you in a bit. everybody we're back and i'm done so that turned out pretty good 
Look at that. Don't that look nice? Nice little Makuni on there. Or Makuni clone, anyway. Got our intake all bolted down, bolted in. Looks pretty good to me. So, I made a gasket, put a gasket on each side of this. So, I would recommend you do the same. It's just a precaution and, whoop. I'm gonna clean up this mess. You can put a little uh, silicone around them on both sides, a little light layer and stick them to it. Works pretty good. But also, I really like this stuff. This copper coat, it's really, really good. It's got copper in it and you put it on gaskets and it's really sticky. It comes with a little brush, you just put it on. It's awesome. I've used that for years. They used to have one called Indian Head a long time ago. I got this now, but that's what they use for the head silicone. So, pretty good stuff. But anyway, it works good. And like I said, we are done. I am happy. Got the cable all done, fixed, on. So, moment of truth. Let me set you up on the camera. And you can just listen to this baby. It idles. That was my deal. Get this camera off. I'm very happy with it. A little noisy, but all the stuff vibrating in the boat. But I am so happy with that. Sitting there idling. I couldn't adjust that other carburetor. This one you got too. Idling it. A little high speed there, I'm assuming, but. This one adjusts your slide up and down and sets the level of it for the idle. But sitting there just running and idling, folks. I mean, that's awesome. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I am thrilled to death over that. Just can't beat that deal. So now we got Makuni style. Shut that noisy thing off. But, I mean, it's just awesome. Probably one pool. Oh, yeah. It even starts better. So, very happy. It's turned into something. I'm pretty happy with it. So, got our little mud motor. We've got a much better carburetor on it. The idle was driving me nuts because this thing wee, 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 up and down. And I like to go through the shallows with these. And sometimes we'll do limb lines. And just kind of piddle fart around in them shallows in the mud and just kind of, you know, cruise along and work stuff. And I I couldn't idle with this, you know. I know everybody's worried about speed, but I'm the exact opposite. When I'm out on the lake, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. I can stay out there all day. I love it. I'm in no hurry. I'm going out there to relax. I'm not going out there to rush anything. And I can tell you right now, this revs up way more than it did with that factory carb. So it's going to have a little more top end, too. But so much better. And just type in 22 millimeter carb for these little 160s, 190s. Um, I mean, it's more than adequate for it. You know, the 212s and stuff. Yeah, you might want to go up to a 26 or something. But this little 22 is fine for this. The throat was way bigger than the factory one. And working like a top. But now you can make your own intake and put this carburetor on, take that governor off and all that crap and just throw that junk away. And this is a much simpler system. And when it comes to the rod, just leave it in. It don't hurt nothing for that thing to set in there. This has a keeper that holds it in, that hooks to the governor. You know, there's a, a couple weights in there that fly around, open up and close. They're designed to stay in there so you don't have to tear this all down and pull these apart to get that out. I mean, I've done a bunch of these and different engines and stuff over the years. Just leave it in and take the crap off the outside. Not a big deal. Because I had it off before I even put this on. I just bypassed it. But this is a simpler, better system. So much better. And I even put the, uh, on the old one here, which I'm getting ready to resurrect this thing. I got lucky with this. On the Briggs intake, it worked fine. All I had to do was take a bigger drill bit and drill this out just a little bit. And this is a 30 mil. I just put it right on there. 
So, I mean, not a big deal. And that's something else. This is a basic guide on how to do those intakes. Every motor is going to be different unless you just happen to have two of the same, which I do like back over there. But this will give you a, a how-to to do it. And don't be intimidated by it. Don't take a really good welder to do this. I did this with a flux core titanium 125 from Arbor Freight. Did a lot of welding with that thing. It's a pretty good welder. So, I mean, you know, build you an intake. Get you a carb, a lot better system than factory. Thrill to death. So one last look and I'm gonna cut this video off. I tried to keep it short and still give you info. But hopefully that'll help you out. But I mean it's it's no big deal. And it idles great now, it revs up more. And you can pick these carburetors up cheap. Just scroll through there. These was on sale. I know they won't be time this video's over. They're normally around 20 bucks, but I got these for eleven fifty with the breather. I ordered two of them. Matter of fact, if they're still for sale when I get in there, I'm going to get two more. Why not? I constantly do stuff out here. So anyway, I'm going to cut the video off. If you know someone building motors or, you know, we're going to do a step-by-step -step on how to put a lawnmower engine on an outboard leg. So stay tuned for that video. But this shows you how to do an intake for any mud motor, any single cylinder engine right here. Do it. And I hope this helped you. If you know someone that's wanting to do this, you know, please share the video. It helps me out a lot on getting views on my channel. It really does. That's better than the thumbs up or anything. Of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to, because we're going to do more of this madness. I'm always doing stuff like this and mud motor stuff on this channel and fishing. So anyways, if you know someone, share it. And I hope that helped you. If it did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if I've earned your subscription. Hopefully I did. And stay tuned for more of the madness. If you do subscribe, hit the bell because we got more of this coming. And I'm going to show you how to put, like I said, one of these on top of a leg. Another basic guide like the carburetor. So, I think I covered everything. Uh, comment amongst yourselves. You know, if I can answer some questions, leave it below. Uh, I am a little bit slow on comments. I've got to get an answer to them. I just busy life and I forget sometimes, but I'll get to them eventually. So as always, like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.